Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation, Let's Make a Christmas Cracker Power App. I'm Keith Atherton. I've been a solution architect and software developer for over 20 years. I'm a Microsoft MVP, Power Platform Community Super User, and one of the organizers of the Scottish Power Platform User Group. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. And thank you to the Festive Tech Calendar team for organizing this event. You can learn more at festivetechcalendar.com. Okay, we're going to create a Christmas Cracker app. So when we pull the cracker or click a button to pull the cracker, we'll get a random Christmas joke each time. Feel free to follow along. I will be covering quite a lot. So if it goes too fast, feel free to pause the video while you follow the steps. Okay, so first up, we're in the Power Apps portal. The first thing we need to do is create a new blank Canvas app. We'll go to Create, Blank App, Blank Canvas App. We'll give this a name, we'll call this Christmas Cracker. Our Select Tablet will just be displaying this in the browser on the PC. And we'll go ahead and click Create. Okay, the app has been created and we're good to go. So the first thing that I'll do is add an image just to make the screen a bit prettier. So I'll go to media, upload. And then previously I've downloaded an image of two people pulling a Christmas cracker. So we'll drag this onto the screen, make this a bit bigger so we can actually see it. And I'll center align that like that. So the next thing I want to do is add a button. And this button will be like pulling the cracker. So when we click the button, that's when we want a new Christmas joke to be displayed. So to add the button, I'll go to insert button. Let's place it under the image. I'll change the text to pull cracker. And again, I'll center align that. There we go, that's fine. We'll save the changes. Now, obviously at the moment, the button doesn't do anything, but down the line, we'll call an API that will bring back random Christmas jokes and then we'll display them on the screen. So the next thing that I want to do is add that text box, which will show the joke that gets returned. So I'll go to insert text label. Now I'm gonna make this a bit bigger because we don't know the size of each joke coming back. Let's place it about there. Now I'm going to want to change the layout of that text. I want to align that differently. So I'm going to start by centering that. I will give it a border like it's a piece of paper uh, which has a boundary around it. So I'll go to border. I'll just add a, a one there so we can see what goes inside. So the alignment it's going to go centered to start with. Let me make that even bigger as well just to be sure. Again we, we don't know what uh, content will be returned by the API. So center aligned, I think there's good. Now we don't need the default of text written in there either. So let's remove that. Okay, I'll save the changes. Now the next thing I want to do is that when we've clicked the pool cracker button, I want it to play a sound effect, making that noise that we'd expect. So I've already found that sound effect and downloaded it. Let's give that a play. Okay, so we can use that very short clip. Now what I'm going to do is go back to media, upload and select the clip. And to play the clip, we'll need an audio player. So I'll go to insert and scroll down to audio. And we'll just pop this in the bottom left corner there just to move it out of the way. And with that selected, we'll go to properties, media, and then select that new audio clip, which is really just a WAV file. Now, if I go ahead and run the player, we should be able to hear the clip. Okay, so far, so good. Now, there's a lot we can do with this audio player, but really what we want to do is eventually wire it up to the pull cracker button. So when we click it, it plays the audio once and once only. So what we can do is use a variable to do this. 
Now what I'm going to do is go to the audio player, advanced, and further down here, we've got a start property right here. Now this takes a Boolean variable um, or a Boolean value, uh, but we're gonna use a variable that we can toggle to play the clip. So what we're going to do is change this default false to a new variable that we've not initialized. So it will give us an error to start with. We'll call it lock for local and play audio. Again, we got get the uh, red wavy line to say, I don't know what you're talking about. But again, we'll set this up in a moment. So I'm gonna head and select that, uh, that value just there. Now, when we first open this screen, we don't want that audio clip to play. So what we're going to do is with the screen selected on visible, I'm going to go ahead and just initialize that variable to be false. It's gonna do, if I can spell properly, update context, and we'll set that value to a false. I'm just gonna, gonna go ahead and copy that as well so we can reuse it later. Now with that value there, that's gonna be false. When we click on the pull cracker button, so we'll select that advanced on select. In this case, we want to set it to true. And that what that's what should then um, cause the audio player to run and play that clip. Now, another thing we want to do is that when we select the player, when that value gets toggled from false to true, it will play the audio clip. But one thing we want to do is then reset the variable back. So after the audio clip's been played, we want to change that variable back to false. So if we ever click it, click the pull cracker button and it goes to true again, it will play the audio clip. It needs to see the value change for that uh, for the audio clip to run. So what we need to do is select the audio player, advanced, and we'll go to the on end uh, action. So when it's finished the clip, this is the bit where we reset that variable. And again, I've just been able to paste that because I copied it from earlier. So we're going to update the context of that lock play audio and set it back to false. So let's see if I've got everything in place. We'll go ahead and save and then preview. Now let's click and try it again. So far, so good. OK, so what I'll do is close down this preview. Uh, the audio player, we don't really need to see it. So just for cosmetics, I'll just go ahead and toggle the visible just so it's hidden away. But again, if I give this a run, it will still work. It's just the control is just not visible, but it's, it's still active. Okay, so we've now got a simple app. We've got an image at the top, uh, a button that will be the cracker pull. And then we've got this text box, which will display the joke when we bring it back. Now there's a few options for the jokes here. We could either find some online or write our own. And then where we store them could either be within the app, say build up a data collection using collect or clear collect, uh, and then pick one at random. Another option might be to store them in a data source. So you might want a SharePoint list or a SQL server table or you know many other options available. But what we'll do today is actually call an API which can return a random Christmas joke and then display that in the text box. So what we're gonna do is have a look at this API, which is called the Joke API. Um, I found this online, looks really, really good for what we need. Uh, it's free. Uh, there's a good selection of jokes in there, um, quite a range, which is good news. So if we scroll down, we've got the option to try it out right here. So we've got some options here like category or categories. I'm gonna go ahead and select custom and just Christmas jokes. So very handy for this demo. Language of English, we'll leave these flags. Uh, we don't want any of those coming back. The response format, we'll leave the default of JSON. There's a couple of joke types. Again, I'll leave the default. And then there's a few options for filtering for the search string or an ID range that we don't really need to use. And the amount of jokes returned, we just want the one. So if I scroll down a bit further, we can see that it's gonna call this URL uh, just so it happens to be a get request and it will call this and we can see, you know, it ends with, with Christmas there. We can see what's being brought back. So we'll go ahead and click on send request and then we can see the result right here. 
So we can see many of the variables come back. We can see these parameters like you know categories and types and so on. But the main two parts are really where it says setup and delivery right here. So in this case, what do Santa's little helpers learn at school? The alphabet. Yeah. So if we go ahead and give this another run, we'll go ahead and do send request. And we can see it's come back with a different joke. So every time we call this, we're going to get a random joke selected and brought back. And this is really what we want to be using uh, within the app itself. So the next thing we need to do is call this API from the app when we pull the cracker. And then when we get the joke returned, which will be those two parameters, setup and delivery, we want to display them in the text box. Now for a power app to call an API and return a value, we need a connector. And there's lots of pre-built connectors out there. There's over a thousand at the time of this session. And they're for common things like calling Outlook or uh, OneDrive, uh, things like this, and many other non-Microsoft APIs as well. However, this joke API, it's a bit niche and there's not a pre-built connector for this. So in this case, we'll need to create a custom connector. Now, the first thing we'll need to do is go to the PowerApps portal. So make.powerapps.com. On the left, you may need to go through the menu, but we'll go to custom connectors. Then we'll select new custom connector. Now we do have a few options. We can create it from blank. Uh, we can use a Postman collection, import from GitHub, lots of other options as well. But what we'll do today is create from blank. We'll give this a name. I'll just give it the same name as the API so it's quite clear what it is. So joke API, continue. Now the first thing I like to do is upload the connector icon. So for me, when I've got a big list of connectors, it's very easy to identify and find in there. So I'll click upload connector icon. I'll select here, I previously downloaded it. And then fairly quickly, we can see that's changed. So it's a bit more visible now, a bit more easier to find. So we can set the uh, icon background color. I think I'll leave that just now. Um, the description, I'll just say, uh, get Christmas joke from joke API. Let's scroll further down. We can leave these valuables as is. Now under host, we'll actually want to go back to the API and actually select this as the host, this very base right here. So let's paste that in there and then we'll go to security. Now security does have a few options. In this case, there's no authentication. There's no username, password or, or API key or anything like that. So we'll just leave that as is and go to definition. And what we want to do here is have one action. And that's the one that will call the endpoint to get that Christmas joke. So I'll go to new action. Uh, the summary, I will just call it uh, get Christmas joke. I'll actually use that for the operation ID as well. It just needs to be something unique. Under visibility, I'll set this as important. So it displays in the list and it's easy to find. Now next up is the request. This will be the endpoint that we're calling. So I'll go to import from sample. Now, let me go back to the API. I know this is the full link, the full endpoint that we're going to call. So if I go back here, I know it's a get request. I'll pass in the URL and we don't have any headers. So I'll go ahead and do import. Great, so that's gone in okay. And then for the response that we get back, I'll go ahead and click on default. We're going to import from a sample. So if we go back to the API, here's a good sample right here. We're going to copy this. Import from sample. Uh, we don't have any headers of interest. We'll go to the body, paste that there and click on import. And we can see it's actually passed this. and We can see all the parameters that have been displayed right here. In the end, there's only two that we care, uh, care about, and that's the setup and the delivery but we can see that they're all available. So we'll go further down and we can see that the validation succeeded. So if we go back here, back up to this definition, 
Okay, next up, we'll move to the next part of the wizard. We don't need to set up an AI plugin. So this is this is fine to leave as is. Let's go ahead. Uh, we don't have any code uh, to change right here. And then we can go to test. So the first thing we need to do is create this connector. Great. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go. So what we'll do next is create a new connection, create. And there we go, we've got a joke API right there. So let's go back to custom connectors. We'll edit the joke API and go to test. And then we've got this one operation, the get Christmas joke. So that's what we want to do. So we'll test operation. Let's scroll further down so we have a 200 so we know all is good that's okay and we can see here's the body that's returned what does santa's little helpers learn at school the alphabet okay so let's try that again test operation see the results great we can see a different setup and delivery so we know that the api is working as expected Now that we've created the custom connector, we want to go back into the Power App and then call it from there. So again, what we're going to do is when we click on the pull cracker button, call the API to get the Christmas joke. And then when we get the properties from it, we'll display it in the text box. And each time we should have a different joke. So what I'll do, actually what I'll do first is go back to the audio player and just make this visible again, just so I can see that, uh, that the sound effect is being played. So let's try that again. Great, yeah, okay, that's still working fine. Okay, so what I need to do now is hook up this new connector. So on the left-hand side, we'll go to data, add data, and then search for the new joke API. Great, we can see it available there. I'll go ahead and select it and then connect to it. Great, now we've got it available to use. So if we go to the pull cracker button, advanced, on select, which is when we click the button, we'll expand the formula bar. And then after setting this variable, we actually wanna call the API. So I'll go to joke API, get Christmas joke, which is available. There's no parameters we pass in. Now, when this gets called, the result will hold all of those parameters that we need. So when this is called, I'm going to store this in a global variable. Let's call it global joke. Great, so now if we select global joke, we'll see there's no values in there at the moment. Great, we didn't find any data. Now when we click the button to call the API and then select it again, we can see we've got values returned. So we can see this one, who is Santa's favorite singer? Elvis Presley. I'll let you decide how funny that is. Okay, so what we're gonna do is call this again. We'll click the button and select global joke. And this time we have a different joke returned. We can see the two parts of interest is the setup and the delivery. Again, we wanna display both in the text box. So now that we've got this working on the button, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. Now within the text box itself, if I go to properties, text, and then expand this at the moment, it's just a hard coded uh, blank value. But what we're going to do is actually use this global variable that stores the setup. So we can see already this setup is now displaying there. And then what we want to do is add uh, a carriage return to this. So we'll do char 10 to have a blank line, then another one, and then we'll display the delivery after that. And then let's go to delivery. So now we've got some formatting. So, uh, so yeah, we can see the setup, blank line, and then delivery. So let's minimize this and preview the app itself. And then we'll pull the cracker. Okay. First one didn't change, but we have a different joke just now. Let's try again. 
Okay, that one's different again. There we go. So now we've got the app finished and working. We can see that we pull the cracker, plays a sound effect, and calls this API through a custom connector, returns the joke, and displays it on the screen. So if this looks like something you'd like to try for yourself, Power Apps does have a free trial for 30 days. However, if you've got a Microsoft 365 license, you might have access to some of the Power App features already. Another thing I'd like to point out is the Power Apps Developer Plan. Now this is like the free trial, but there's no time limit. It's great. So if you want to get access to Power Apps, Power Automate, Dataverse, and many other features, you can sign up to the Power Apps Developer Plan and don't need to worry about the 30-day limit. Now, the one caveat with this developer plan is it really is for development and testing. It's not intended for production usage. Again, thank you to the Festive Tech Calendar team for organizing this event. The Festive Tech Calendar is raising money for the Raspberry Pi Foundation this year. So do visit festivetechcalendar.com to learn more. Please check out the other Festive Tech Calendar sessions as well. So we've reached the end. Thank you very much for your time. If you've enjoyed it, feel free to like it and share it on social media using hashtag Festive Tech Calendar. And again, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Take care.